I think many of us work our whole career to have this kind of data, and I've been doing this for about 30 years. So it's very exciting to me for the patients that we treat. Now the Cleopatra study, and I'm um, representing the Cleopatra study group, many investigators in 204 centers in 25 countries, so it was a global trial, looking at first-line treatment of patients with HER2 positive, centrally confirmed metastatic breast cancer. And about half of the patients actually presented with advanced disease. Now this study is a large study, it's 808 patients, and it was a randomized study, and it was placebo controlled, I think that's very important for the endpoints in this study. And it was a comparison of two monoclonal antibodies to HER2, pertuzumab and trastuzumab. Now pertuzumab binds at a different site of the HER2 receptor than trastuzumab and preclinical and clinical data support using the two together, not sequentially. So the randomization was using pertuzumab, trastuzumab, and docetaxel chemotherapy versus the placebo trastuzumab docetaxel. Now, it, the patients were to have gotten six cycles of chemotherapy unless they couldn't tolerate it, and actually the median number of cycles was eight on this. And then they were treated with the monoclonal antibodies, both or the placebo, until progressive disease. So I, I hope that that's very clear. And um, the, as I said, the median number of cycles of chemo was eight. And then they received um, much longer the two monoclonal antibodies. Now these are the, the results, which I think are phenomenal. Um, and this is the median follow-up of 50 months now, so it's 20 months longer than the last presentation, and it's the final overall survival analysis at pre-specified number of events. It was 385 events. As you can see here, the hazard ratio is 0.68. And the p-value is very significant at 0 0.0002. And I think what's more important for us as clinicians, besides the statistics, is, are the numbers, the median survival. Now, you can see the median survival with trastuzumab is already very good at 40.8 months. I mean, that really changed things for patients with HER2 positive breast cancer. And now adding the pertuzumab increased it by 15.7 months. So that, to me, is incredible. I have never seen that in any other trial in metastatic breast cancer. So it goes from 40.8 to 56.5 months. And also we did an updated progression-free survival analysis, which was consistent with previous analysis, showing an improvement of 6.3 months of progression-free survival. So that um, is also very, very good. And it really does suggest, for those of you who are into the um, looking at different endpoints, that in this blinded study, progression-free survival was a good surrogate for overall survival. I think that's an important point. Now, the, the um, other aspect is when you have treatment, uh, additional treatment, frequently you have additional toxicities, and I don't have all of it on the slide here, but there were additional toxicities with pertuzumab, um, considering rash, uh, mucositis, and diarrhea, for example, were greater with pertuzumab. I wanted to specifically point out the cardiac safety, since both of these monoclonal antibodies do bind to that HER2 receptor. And as you all know, with um, HER2 targeted therapy and patients who've had previous anthracyclines, for the most part, have some increased cardiac toxicity. And there was a concern when we started this doing the combination that we'd see more with the two monoclonal antibodies, but we actually don't. We see less, I, I, you know, it's very similar. So symptomatic left ventricular dysfunction or basically heart failure was 1.8% in placebo and 1.5% in the pertuzumab. So we, we did not have additional heart failure symptoms. 
And then just the dropping of the heart um, pumping, the left ventricular ejection fraction to below normal, which was asymptomatic, was actually a little bit more on the placebo arm, but they're really basically very, very similar. And I think another important point, even though there was one new um, heart failure in the pertuzumab group, it did resolve. Um, it actually came on very late, and it resolved after the antibodies were stopped. So the, the other point is these decreases in the heart function that were asymptomatic for the most part reversed in 88% in of the pertuzumab patients. So just to summarize it, the addition of the trastuzumab to the standard first-line therapy significantly improved the median overall survival. Again, I can't say this enough, it's by 15.7 months. And it was a benefit that was consistent across all the subgroups. And as I mentioned, the investigator-initiated progression-free survival was also maintained at 6.3 months. No new safety concerns. Um, the long-term cardiac safety was maintained. So I really, we all believe that the 56.5 month median overall survival is unprecedented in this indication and that confirms the pertuzumab regimen as a first-line standard of care for patients with HER2-positive metastatic breast cancer. So thank you all very much for coming and listening.